Aside from the starters, legendary Pokémon are among the most iconic of all time. And not just for their cool designs, but also for the lore surrounding them. And the big question is, how exactly are they all connected? And this is the legendary Pokémon family tree. Now, for the purpose of this video, we'll talk about how each of these legendaries are connected with one another. And our explanations can either be confirmed in-game or through some speculation. And what better place to start than the alpha Pokémon, Arceus? According to legend, Arceus hatched from an egg when there was nothing, and shaped the entire universe with its 1,000 arms. With its ability Multi-Type, it has the power to change its type that corresponds with the plate it's holding. It shows great care for the Pokémon world and its inhabitants, having protected the planet from events such as meteor showers, and shows compassion towards humans that treat it with kindness back. On the contrary, it shows no mercy towards those who betray it, going on violent rampages and is known to hold long grudges. Because of its godly status, it has been worshipped in the Hisui region for millennia, with its nickname the Almighty Sinnoh, being the basis of what Hisui would later be known as. Off to the side is the new species Pokémon, Mew. Mew is playful and childish, but at the same time harbors high intelligence and is quite resourceful and adaptable, being able to disappear at will. It's likely for this reason as to why so few people have actually seen it and why it was declared extinct for many years. In fact, it's believed to have been plentiful in numbers in the past. It wasn't until scientists discovered DNA of it in South America. Yeah, South America. It's actually mentioned in the Pokemon Mansion on Cinnabar Island. That confirmed it to still exist. Mew has unique DNA coding, making it able to transform into any Pokemon and use any move. And speaking of DNA, it has been said to contain the DNA of all Pokemon with some scientists believing it to be the ancestor of all species. Though this is a bit curious considering Arceus created the entire universe, leaving Mew's relationship to it up in the air. Maybe it's a chicken and the egg type situation. I guess it's all up to interpretation. Now, directing our attention back to Arceus, it directly created six Pokemon when forming the universe. So you could say they're its children. The first three we'll be looking at are the Pokemon of Myth. Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina. Dialga has power over time, being able to warp and travel through it. It's said that time began moving when it was born, and it flows every time its heart beats. Palkia, on the other hand, has power over space, being able to warp it, travel to faraway places and other dimensions, and even destroy it. A proverb states that its birth created the world sky, and it's said that space becomes more stable every time it breathes. Both Pokémon have the power to create new universes by themselves or with each other. The Diamond and Pearl clans in the Hisui region worship Dialga and Palkia respectively, referring to them as, quote, the Almighty Sinnoh. Meanwhile, Giratina, representing antimatter, was banished to the distortion world by Arceus for violent behavior. It's said to gaze upon the old world from its home in the distortion world, which is the reverse side of the Pokémon world. Once holding a massive grudge against Arceus, it was willing to fight against it alongside Volo. After being defeated by a child from the future, it changed its ways and now helps to protect the universe from threats. All three Pokémon of Myth have origin forms that they retain in their home dimensions, or when holding their respective orbs, which are thought to be their true forms. Now onto the other trio that Arceus created, the Lake Guardians, Euxie, Mesprit, and Azelf, all thought to have hatched from the same egg. They each gave humans key abilities to survive. Euxie gave humans knowledge, Mesprit emotions, and Azelf willpower. And they can take these abilities away from those who disrespect them. After their creation, they went to live inside caverns at the bottom of Lake Security, Verity, and Valor, respectively. Hence their title of the Lake Guardians. The trio is also capable of creating and destroying the Red Chain, an item that's able to take control of Dialga and Palkia, and they have the power to calm one of the two, but not at once. With emotions being a big trait of theirs, we can deduce that the Eon siblings, Latias and Latios, are related to Mesprit in some capacity. The two are highly intelligent and capable of understanding human speech. 
They are highly sensitive to the emotions of people and can sense them via telepathy. Latios can also turn invisible while Latios can fly faster than a jet by tucking in its arms. Upon Mega Evolving, both can reach speeds of Mach 4. Now going back over to Dialga, it is highly possible that it has a relation to the time travel Pokemon Celebi, if its category name wasn't obvious. Celebi serves as the guardian of Johto's Ilex Forest, always wandering across time and is said only to appear in peaceful times. When it disappears into the forest, it's said to leave behind an egg it brought over from the future, and grass and trees flourish in these forests it appears in. It's thought that as long as Celebi appears, a bright and shining future awaits. Now, a huge slew of legendary Pokemon come from space and can thus be likely traced back to Palkia. The first and most significant of these is the Sky High Pokemon, Rayquaza. Rayquaza has lived for hundreds of millions of years in the ozone layer, feeding on the likes of water particles and meteoroids. Every time Kyogre and Groudon have clashed, it has come down and calmed them. It's also able to Mega Evolve and doesn't need to hold a Mega Stone in order to do so. In Hoenn, Rayquaza is seen as a savior by the Draconid people, having performed the world's first Mega Evolution to save the region from Kyogre and Groudon's fighting. And they built the Sky Pillar in its honor. The second most significant Pokemon of this group is the gigantic Pokemon, Eternatus. Eternatus came from an asteroid that landed in the Gala region around 20,000 years ago resulting in the darkest day, during which massive amounts of the Dynamax energy it released caused many Pokemon to Dynamax and rampage out of control. The darkest day was stopped when Eternatus was defeated by Zacian, Zamazenta, and the two ancient Galarian kings. Its defeat resulted in its power, known as Galar Particles, to leak out which are what cause the Dynamax and Gigantamax phenomenon to occur in present day. During the events of Sword and Shield, Chairman Rose reawakens Eternatus and creates a second Darkest Day, causing it to turn into its Eternamax form. In this form, it's absorbed all of Galar's energy, making it go into power overload, releasing infinite amount of energy and warping the space-time around it. It was only able to be stopped by Zacian and Zamazenta, just like all those years ago. Our next mythical Pokémon in this tree is the DNA Pokémon Deoxys. Deoxys was formed by the mutation of a virus and came from outer space inside a meteor. It's highly intelligent, with its brain being the object in its chest, out of which it can shoot lasers. Other than its normal form, it also has attack, defense, and speed forms, which it can transform between when exposed to special meteors. Making our way to yet another mythical Pokémon, we have the Wish Pokémon, Jirachi. A legend states that any wish written on the notes on its head will come true. It will only wake for one week every 1,000 years by the singing of a pure voice. When asleep, it's enveloped in a tight crystalline shell and has the ability to fight even without awaking. And also of note is a marking on its belly which, when it's open, contains a third eye. From the stars to the moon, next we have the Lunar Pokémon, Cresselia. Representing the Crescent Moon and the maiden that created the Milky Way, Cresselia dispels nightmares, and those who sleep holding its feather are guaranteed to have happy dreams. But on the opposite end, and completing the section of the tree, is the pitch black Pokémon Darkrai. Active during nights of the new moon, Darkrai has the power to lull people to sleep and make them dream, giving them nightmares. That said, this is not done with malicious intent, as it's merely a defense mechanism used to dispel people and Pokémon invading its territory. The nightmares caused by it can be stopped by giving the individual afflicted with them a Lunar Feather from Cresselia. Okay, so let's start off a new section of the family tree with the sea Pokémon Kyogre. Kyogre is not only believed to be the personification of the ocean, but the creator of the ocean itself. It also controls the water and expanded the seas, and can cause torrential downpours. It has the ability to go through primal reversion and change into what is said to be its true and original form. Whenever it encounters Groudon, the two clash in a battle for supremacy, just to always be calmed by Rayquaza. Because of its deep sea connections, the diving Pokémon Lugia likely has a direct correlation to Kyogre. Lugia is an extremely powerful controller of storms. If it flaps its wings, it can cause a storm that lasts for 40 days. 
and even simply a light flutter can blow apart houses. Because of how strong its powers are, it chooses to live in the deep sea trenches. And Lugia is the leader of our next Pokemon, the legendary birds Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Articuno has the ability to control ice, creating blizzards by freezing moisture in the air. Zapdos has the ability to control electricity, creating lightning by flapping its wings. And Moltres has the ability to control fire, creating flames when flapping its wings. The three also have forms in the Galar region. Whether they're separate from their Cantonian counterparts or they simply take these forms when they enter Galar is unknown. Regardless, they show up in the Crown Tundra every few decades to come eat fruits at the Dyna Tree. Articuno gains psychic powers to keep itself airborne and fire beams to freeze enemies solid. Zapdos has become nearly flightless, able to run at speeds of over 180 miles per hour and perform kicks able to destroy dump trucks. And Moltres has become sinister in nature, letting out flame-like aura that can consume the spirit of any creature unlucky enough to be on the receiving end of it, leaving them as burned out shadows of themselves. With strong weather being a part of Kyogre's nature, it can be deduced that the forces of nature, Tornadus, Thunderous, Landorus, and Enamorous, are connected to it. Tornadus and Thunderous create windstorms and thunderstorms, respectively, which are able to blow away houses and create forest fires. Landorus is able to calm the two and fix the damage they cause by helping crops grow, giving it the nickname the Guardian of the Fields. In a similar vein, Enamorous signals the rise of spring whenever it appears, giving it the nicknames the Herald of Spring and God of Spring. Its love was said to give rise to fresh life. All four forces of nature's have vastly different looking Therian forms, which are thought to be their true forms. With its connection to spring, the gratitude Pokemon Shaman has a possible correlation to Enamorous. Upon winter's end and people giving thanks, Shaman appears and covers the land with flowers, and the flowers all over its body bloom when it's hugged. It delivers gratitude and is able to dissolve toxins in the air, making a once polluted land become covered with flowers. When exposed to the Gracidia flower, it turns into its sky form and gains the power of flight. Strong feelings are also a big part of the Melody Pokemon, Meloetta, and the Victory Pokemon, Victini. The melodies that Meloetta sings are able to control the feelings of people and Pokemon that hear them and have inspired many famous songs. When it uses the move Relic Song, it can transform between its Aria and Pirouette forms at will. Meanwhile, Victini shares the unlimited amount of energy it creates upon touching someone, making their body overflow with power. It's said that a trainer with a Victini will always win. With 80% of the seafaring Pokemon Manaphy's body being made of water, it's almost definitely a creation of Kyogre. Manaphy was born on the cold seafloor and possesses the unique ability to bond with any Pokemon. It swims a long distance to return to where it was born and has the nickname Prince of the Sea. Manaphy is also able to lay eggs that hatch into the Sea Drifter Pokemon, Theone although the relationship between the two is still unknown. And to be honest, not much is known about Fioni in general, other than the fact that it drifts via a flotation sack on its head, in packs, and like Manaphy, also returns to where it was born. And that ends that portion of the tree. Starting off this next section is the continent Pokemon Groudon. Groudon is the polar opposite of Kyogre, where it's said to be the personification of the land and the creator of the world's continents. It creates intense droughts that can evaporate water and cause volcanic eruptions, which when summoned can create land. And just like Kyogre, it's able to go through primal reversion and change into its true and original form. And the two have fought whenever they've encountered each other just to be quelled by Rayquaza. But up next is the other legendary associated with continents, the colossal Pokemon Regigigas. A legend states that Regigigas towed the continents with ropes and can form whole other Pokemon in its own image using inanimate objects. It was later deemed too powerful, so it was sealed away in the basement of the Snowpoint Temple. And that brings us to the very Pokemon Regigigas created. The legendary giants, Regirock, Regice, Registeel, Regilecki, and Regidrago. Regirock's body is composed entirely of rocks, and if any part of it is chipped off in battle, it seeks out other rocks to repair itself. Regice is made of ice from an ice age. 
Cloaking itself with air as Claude is negative 328 degrees Fahrenheit, it cannot be melted, not even with magma, and anything that just so much as goes near it will freeze. Registeel has a completely hollow body harder than any metal and can't be scratched. Regilecki was created using pure electric energy and is powerful enough to generate all of Galar's electricity if its full power were to be unleashed by removing the rings on its body. Regidraga was created using crystallized dragon energy and only a head remains because Regigigas ran out of crystals before it could be fully completed, which let's be honest is a real bummer for Regidrago. But it is said to be powerful enough to contain the power of every dragon type Pokemon. All five of these Pokemon were sealed away in ancient times, like their creator, possibly because they were also deemed too powerful. Now, one of two other legendary Pokemon that have a connection to the ground is the Terra Pokemon, Terrapicos. Inhabiting the Paldea region in ancient times, it was thought to have gone extinct due to seismic shifts about two million years ago. However, it survived by changing the energy in its body into hard crystals and going into hibernation deep in Area Zero. It was discovered by Heath of the Area Zero Expedition Survey Team and coined its name. It's actually responsible for Paldea's terrestrial phenomenon, is capable of bringing people and Pokemon from other timelines to its world, and its terrestrial energy can power up AI-powered machines. When either in danger or in battle, it turns into its terrestrial form, where it gains a sturdy shell made of crystals it produces. Due to its colors and shape, it was known as the Indigo Disk. And meanwhile, it takes on its stellar form when it's at full power, and goes on energy overload which risks causing havoc on Paldea's entire ecosystem. Also having a connection to the ground is a Carbank that underwent a mutation to turn into the jewel Pokemon, Deonsi. By compressing the carbon in the air between its hands, it can create many diamonds, and its glimmering body is said to be one of the loveliest sights in the world. It's also capable of Mega Evolution, where it was known as the Royal Pink Princess due to its appearance. In this form, it can create a sword out of diamonds in battle, and can now shine so brilliantly that one cannot look at it when it reflects light. Going over to the volcanoes, the Lava Dome Pokemon Heatran is up next. Heatran was born from the magma within Mount Coronet and lives in volcanic caves using its feet to crawl on ceilings and walls. Its body is made of rugged steel and its blood boils like magma. Its own heat was enough to partially melt spots on its body as well. With a name like the steam Pokemon, Volcanions, you couldn't get more blunt as to where it came from. Volcanion has a special organ that allows it to instantly vaporize the water it absorbs and let out powerful steam from the arms on its back. And the steam has enough power to blow away a mountain. You might be surprised to learn that our final Pokemon in this section, the Thunderclap Pokemon, Zerora, also came from a volcano. Specifically, it was born from an explosion caused by a lightning bolt striking an erupting volcano. It runs at lightning speed, tearing opponents apart with its claws that emanate high-voltage electricity. Even if its opponents dodge its attacks, they still get electrocuted by the sparks that fly out. Okay, starting the next part of the tree is the rainbow Pokemon Ho-Oh. Considered the guardian of the skies and possessing the power to resurrect the dead, Ho-Oh continuously flies the world's skies as a rainbow forms behind it. Its rainbow-colored feathers are taught to bring joy and happiness to those that see it. It used to perch on the bell tower in the Johto region until the brass tower burned down. Which leads us into our next trio, the legendary beasts. Raikou, Entei, and Suicune. They were initially three different Pokemon that resided in the Brass Tower and died when it burnt down. A popular fan theory states that these original beasts were Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon. In any case, the three were resurrected by Ho-Oh to become what are now Raikou, Entei, and Suicune. Raikou represents the lightning strike that ignited the fire that burned the Brass Tower down. It runs around the land emitting roars that sound like crashing thunder. Entei represents the flames that burnt down the tower. It embodies magma and a volcano erupts every time that it roars, and Suicune represents the rain that put out the flames of the burning tower. The north winds will blow whenever it appears, and it has the ability to purify polluted water. Three Paradox Pokemon, Raging Bolts, Gouging Fire, and Walking Wake are thought to either be ancient relatives of the beasts, or versions of them from a different timeline. 
Moving on over to Unova, we have that region's main legendaries, the Tau Trio, Reshiram, Zekrom, and Kyurem. Reshiram and Zekrom were said to be a single powerful dragon used by two brothers to create Unova. However, the older brother sought for truth and the younger for ideals. They began to argue and fight over who was right, and in response, the dragons split into two, Reshiram siding with truth and Zekrom for ideals. The two battled, but neither could defeat each other, resulting in the brothers to set aside their differences and came to terms that neither side was right. Years later, the sons of the brothers continued the fight, resulting in Reshiram and Zekrom destroying the region with fire and lightning. The two can transform into the light and dark stones respectively if their bodies get destroyed. Kyurem is a dragon whose body is frozen and can form ultra cold air. A legend states that when the original dragon split, the leftovers became Kyurem. It waits for a hero to fill in the missing parts of its body with truth or ideals. This came to be completed by fusing it with Reshiram or Zekrom to become White Kyurem or Black Kyurem. Next are the final legendaries from Unova, the Swords of Justice, Cobalion, Terrakian, Verizion, and Keldeo. With a heart and body of steel, Cobalion punished people that hurt Pokemon, and can even control an unruly Pokemon with its stare. Terrakian has enough power to break through a castle wall with a single blow, which it used to protect Pokemon. And Verizion's head has horns as sharp as blades to cut opponents with whirlwind-like movements. And like the other members of its trio, it also fought against humans to protect Pokemon. One of these Pokemon they protected was Caldeo, who was separated from its parents in a fire caused by a war among people people. They acted as surrogate parents and taught it everything it knew in order to survive in battle. Eventually, it grew up and surpassed its surrogates in power, and took off into the forest one day without anyone knowing why. The four eventually met up again, and they taught Caldeo Secret Sword. And one more thing to note is that there are paradox Pokemon known as Ice Crown, Iron Boulder, and Iron Leaves, which are thought to be either descendants of Cobalion, Terrakion, and Verizion, or different versions of them from a different time. Timeline. Making our way to Kalos, we have the region's main legendaries, the Aura Trio, Xerneas, Evoltal, and Zygarde. Xerneas can share everlasting life when its horns shine in seven different colors, according to legend. It rescued Pokemon during an ancient war and later slept for a thousand years as a tree before being revived. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Eveltal absorbs the life force of every living thing when its tail feathers glow red and spread wide, ending its life cycle and turning into a cocoon. Both can transform evolution stones into mega stones and are in charge of balancing life and death. Zygarde, meanwhile, is in charge of monitoring the ecosystem and preventing it from falling into disarray. Its form changes depending on how many of its cells it's gathered. It takes a dog-like appearance when it gathers 10% of its cells, a snake-like appearance when it gathers 50%, and when it gathers all its cells, it becomes a gigantic titan that it unleashes to destroy anything that threatens the ecosystem. Next, we have the Nebula Pokemon Cosmog. Known as the Child of the Stars by the people of Alola, Cosmog's name was coined by a professor at the Aether Foundation. It came from another world and is theorized to be an Ultra Beast. It has a very trusting nature and becomes attached to whoever shows kindness to it. This can be a bad thing for it, as some bad actors have used it to their advantage to exploit its powers to open ultra wormholes. Cosmog shares the rare distinction of being one of the few legendaries to be capable of evolution, and its first stage is the protostar Pokemon, Cosmoem. Upon evolution, Cosmoem becomes motionless, staying in a cocoon-like shell harder than any known material. It doesn't eat, instead opting to absorb starlight and dust in the air to build energy in its core and prepare for evolution. Which brings us to the two Pokemon it's able to evolve into, the Sun Pokemon, Solgaleo, and the Moon Pokemon, Lunala. Solgaleo was once known as the beast that devours the sun, able to light up the world with the intense light it emanates from its body. Lunala, known as the beast that calls the moon, is able to devour light and turn the world into darkness. Both can also create cosmog and travel through ultra space, with the residents of Ultra Megalopolis using them as ride Pokemon. And connecting the duo is the prism Pokemon, Necrozma. Hailing from Ultra Space, Necrozma once gained the ability to give light, but lost the ability after ancestors of the Ultra Recon Squad injured it in an attempt to steal its light. This light is the aura that surrounds a trainer and Pokemon performing a Z-move, and the area that surrounds a totem Pokemon. Being in an incomplete state, Necrozma is in constant pain and searches for light 
to turn back into its original form. Because Solgaleo and Lunala are composed entirely of light, they are frequently hunted down by it, and can fuse into either one of them to become its Dusk Mane or Dawn Wings form. If it collects enough light and Z power, Necrozma turns back into its original true form, Ultra Necrozma, a massive dragon made entirely of pure light energy. But let's move to the Alola region's other major legendaries. We have the Guardian deities, Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, Tapu Bulu, and Tapu Fini. The four Tapus are referred to as the Guardian deities because they are the protectors of Alola's four islands. Tapu Koko protects Malimali Island, Lili Akala Island, Bulu Ula Ula Island, and Finny Pawnee Island. They also control electricity, scales, vegetation, and water, respectively, and are both feared and revered for their aggressiveness. Now, making our way to the Gala region, we have the hero duo, Zacian and Zamazenta. Believed to either be siblings or rivals, Zacian and Zamazenta were both feared and respected by the people of Galar. And as we discussed with Eternatus, they worked together with the region's two ancient kings to end the darkest day. The two can turn into statues and rest for years and also cast illusions. Zacian and Zamazenta can also wield a sword and shield, respectively, when given the rusted sword and rusted shield. Next is another legendary capable of evolution, the Wushu Pokemon, Kubfu. Referred to as the secret armor of the Isle of Armor's Master Dojo, Kubfu used to help people on their travels according to historical texts. Through special breathing techniques and intense focusing, it can create fighting energy thanks to a unique organ in its body. The types of moves it masters determine the form it evolves into. And that evolution is the Wushu Pokemon, Urshifu. Urshifu's appearance, style of battling, and personality is different depending on which form it takes. Single strike style Urshifu battles without holding back, often going for a one hit KO with its signature move, Wicked Blow. Its Gigantamax form is known as the embodiment of rage, and it's said that its shout will rid the world of evil. Rapid strike style Urshifu, on the other hand, likes to observe the opponent's attacks while dodging, later using its signature move, Surging Strikes, to overwhelm them with multiple strikes. Its Gigantamax form keeps a perfect one-legged stance while taking the lives of those that are evil with a single glare. Moving on over to the Crown Tundra, we have the King Pokemon, Calyrex. Known as the King of Bountiful Harvests, Calyrex brings yearly harvests to the Crown Tundra and is said to have been the King of Galar in ancient times. It has the power to heal wounds and is one of the few Pokemon to possess the ability to speak in the human language telepathically. And it can also tame its two steeds to regain its full power. And these steeds are the Wild Horse Pokemon, Glastrier, and the Swift Horse Pokemon, Spectrier. Glastrier has great physical strengths and destructive power that it uses to forcefully take anything it wants. It emits extremely cold air generated in its body from its nose and hooves, and while it can't move particularly fast, it can freeze the ground and slide across the ice. When tamed by Calyrex, it can create cold temperatures up to negative 508 degrees Fahrenheit, and becomes able to run up to 7 days and 7 nights. Spectrier, on the other hand, prefers to be isolated and comes out at night. Because of this, it has poor eyesight, but its other four senses are very strong. When tamed by Calyrex, it becomes so fast that it can run a thousand miles in one day, and can create many small wisps to steal an opponent's life force. Our next stop is Paldea, and connected to the non-legendary Cyclozar are the Paradox Pokemon, Koridon and Moridon. Nicknamed Winged King in Iron Serpent, they're thought to either be an ancestor and descendant, respectively, of Cyclozar, or versions of it from another dimension. They were brought over via Time Machine by Professor Seda and Turo, who coined the names of the two, and pretty much everything else about them is unknown. Onto the newest addition to the series, the subjugation Pokemon, Petrurunt, known as the Never Rotting Peach. Petrurunt creates toxic Muchi, which when consumed by those that eat it, fall under its complete control and draw out their darkest desires. Humans under its control have purple eyes and become surrounded by a purple aura, while doing a strange dance and possessing a limited vocabulary. According to a myth, it came from a distant land where it was adopted by an elderly couple. Petrurans fed Binding Muchi to its new parents, bringing out their greed, and the two gave it many requests. One of these requests was to fetch them four masks that could be found in Kitakami. 
Petcherunt recruited three Pokemon for help in its quest, known as the Loyal Three, Ogidogi, Monkey Dory, and Pheasantipity. The small and weak Ogidogi went to Petcherunt wishing for strength. The slow and dim-witted Monkey Dory approached it wishing for cleverness, and Pheasantipity, who had short, dull feathers, turned to it wishing for beauty. Petcherunt granted their wishes, but at the same time, binded them with its toxic chain. With its newfound control over them, it used the three to help steal the masks. The masks, which belonged to the mask Pokemon, Orgapon and its partner, Okidogi and Pheasantipity, snuck into their cavern while the two were away, stealing three of the four masks with the last being protected after Orgapon's partner fended them off. Orgapon went after them, with the loyal three losing their lives in battle, and Petcherunt being knocked out and sent rolling away in its shell. Orgapon would become vilified by the people of Masui Town, thinking the loyal three had died protecting their village from an evil ogre, hence how the three got their nickname. The first in a string of mythical Pokemon that don't seem to be connected to any other Pokemon is the mischief Pokemon Hoopa. Hoopa in its confined form is a troublemaker that can use its loop to send anything to faraway places. This loop can also warp space, which is even more realized in its unbound form, which is said to be its true form. Here, it's able to bend dimensions and steal anything it wants on a much bigger scale. A legend states that it once was greedy enough to carry off an entire castle to steal the treasure located inside. Up next is the Gloom Dweller Pokemon, Marshadow. Marshadow was a myth for a long time because it never appears in front of people, instead choosing to conceal itself in the shadows of others. While doing so, it copies their powers and movements, eventually becoming stronger than those it imitates. The rogue monkey Pokemon, Zerude, is next. It lives in dense forests, with the other Pokemon fearing it due to its very aggressive nature. The vines on its body become nutrients in the soil when they tear off, helping the plants grow. One special Zerude, called Dada, left its pack to raise a human child, donning a cloth that it used to comfort it. The last Pokemon we'll be going over before we get to our final section is the Hexnut Pokemon, Melton. Melton melts particles of iron and other metals, using them to form its body of molten steel, and it also eats those metals. Melton live as a group, and eventually one that is strong enough will absorb all the others and evolve. Into the Hexnut Pokemon, Melmetal. Melmetal came back to life after being dormant for 3,000 years and was worshipped in ancient times for being able to create iron from nothing. Its body has hardened due to evolution, but it's still in a liquid state and has flexibility flexibility, especially in its arms, which are said to deliver the strongest punches of all Pokemon. At the end of its lifespan, it will fall apart and rust, becoming reborn as Melton. Melmetal also has a Gigantamax form, which can send out electric beams that can vaporize an opponent in one shot. Now, finally, we've decided to dedicate the last part of the family tree to the legendaries that were created by humans. The first of these are the Treasures of Ruin. Wochin, Qin Po, Ting Lu, and Qi Yu. While not entirely created by humans, the treasures that are their true forms were brought to life via the negative emotions of people in ancient times. Wuxin was formed via the grudge of a person punished for writing a king's evil deeds on wooden tablets that make up its shell. It drains the life force from vegetation. Qin Po was created by the hatred of people who got killed by the sword that it holds. It can control 100 tons of fallen snow. Ting Lu was formed via the fear poured into a vessel that makes up its antlers. It can split the earth open with massive fissures that are 160 feet deep. Lastly, the beads that make up Qi Yu's eyes sparked many conflicts, and the envy that emanated from those conflicts created it. It controls flames that burn as hot as 5400 degrees Fahrenheit. Making our way to the Aether Foundation, we have the synthetic Pokemon Type Null. Type Null was created as part of the Beast Killer Project, a project started to create a Pokemon that can successfully defeat the Ultra Beasts. It was developed with cells from every Pokemon type, with the intention of giving it the ability to replicate Arceus, calling it the RKS system. This made the Aether Foundation name it Type Full. Three models were created, but they all rejected the RKS system and went berserk. 
The three then got reinstated by special helmets and became permanently cryogenically frozen. Because the Beast Killer project was deemed a failure, Type Full was given its current name. Gladion later freed one of the Type Null and befriended it, hoping to find a way to break its helmet and give it the ability to use the RKS system. He would eventually be successful and Type Null would evolve into Type Full which he renamed to Silvaly, the synthetic Pokemon. Now with the RKS system activated, it can change its type that corresponds with the memory it's holding, just like Arceus and its plates. Staying in Alola, we have the artificial Pokemon Majerna. Majerna was built by a scientist 500 years ago where it was gifted to a king's daughter. It donned a pattern similar in coloring to a Pokeball on its body, but over time, the color deteriorated and it turned gray. It has a sphere on its chest called the Soul Heart, which is its true life form. It can understand human speech and perceive the emotions of people and other Pokemon. Our second to last legendary is the Paleozoic Pokemon, Genesect. Genesect existed 300 million years ago as an apex predator. Team Plasma would later revive it from a fossil and technologically advance it in an attempt to create the strongest Pokemon. N canceled the project because he believed that Pokemon would lose their beauty if modified by science. However, one scientist kept working on it, reconstructing it, and attaching a cannon to its back. Special drives can be attached to Genesect's cannon to change the type of its signature move, Techno Blast. And finally, we thought it would only be appropriate to end on the original man-made legendary Pokemon, the genetic Pokemon Mewtwo. Mewtwo was created by altering the DNA of Mew and splicing the genes. It was held and studied in Cinnabar Island's Pokemon Mansion, where it broke free and destroyed the mansion, and fled to Cerulean Cave. Because it was only created for battling, it was not given a compassionate heart and thus only thinks about defeating its opponents. Mewtwo is also capable of Mega Evolution. Mega Mewtwo X gains the fighting type, can run 328 feet in 2 seconds, and has a grip strength of 1 ton. Mega Mewtwo Y, on the other hand, has had its mental power boosted significantly and can smash a skyscraper with just one thought. 